This is Johnny, a real scientist. Unfortunately, he's not a very good scientist. Johnny's safety skills are very poor. Let's go over some basic safety procedures to help him out. Why, hello there, and welcome to the lab. Now before we begin, let's make sure we know where all the safety equipment is located. Knowing the location of all the safety equipment is very important in the case of an emergency. When I work in the lab, I tend to break things. So knowing where the first aid kit is can really help if I cut myself or explode something. Johnny, what are you doing with that broken glassware? I always like to leave my broken glassware in a pile. Then, at the end of the lab, I just throw it in the garbage. Never throw your broken glassware in the garbage. Often there are still traces of chemicals on the glassware, and the broken edges can be dangerous. You could seriously injure the caretaker, like this. Always immediately discard your broken glass in the proper container. Johnny, no! Some of those chemicals could be toxic or react with water or other materials. Chemicals should be poured into labeled waste containers, and your instructor will dispose of it safely. If your lab has a safety shower, it can be used to extinguish clothing fires or wash the whole body in case of large chemical spills. Make sure you remove any contaminated clothing. This is awesome. There's even a curtain for privacy in case my clothes start on fire. But how do I handle chemicals in the eyes? Well, Johnny, you would use the eye wash fountain for that. Make sure you know where the eye wash station is located. If any chemicals get in your eye, come here to flush them out. Johnny, will you demonstrate their proper use? Now I know what to do in case I spill chemicals on myself. What if there's a fire? Oh no, I'm in big trouble this time. How am I going to put this fire out? Maybe a big bucket of water. No, Johnny, never use water on a fire in a laboratory. It might be a chemical fire, and we'll just spread the chemicals, making the fire larger. Always use a class BC or ABC fire extinguisher. Make sure to know where this is before you begin your work. Johnny here is ready to get to work, but he's forgotten a few important things about what to bring into the lab, or what not to bring to the lab. <laughs> Backpacks and jackets can take up space and may create tripping hazards for others around you. It's best to leave them in your locker. Johnny, haven't you learned by now? Never bring food or drinks into the lab. It's best to leave them in your locker. Oh gee, I got water on myself. How am I ever going to get clean now? Wearing a lab coat will help protect you and your clothing from any chemical spills. Well, I guess I'm ready to get to work then. Always wear proper footwear and gloves. These will help protect you from toxic and corrosive chemicals. Don't forget to wash your hands before you leave. Despite our best efforts, sometimes mistakes still occur in the lab. While it is important that we try to limit these mistakes, we must know how to deal with the emergencies that may occur. Take Johnny here. The best way Johnny can prevent accidents is to keep his workspace clean. Look at all the potential hazards here. Not only is this dangerous, but the next person to use Johnny's workspace is going to be very mad at him. Make sure you clean up after yourself. Here, let me help. Nice and clean. This is awesome. Very awesome. Oh no, there's acid everywhere. How am I going to clean up this mess? Well, Johnny, anytime you have a large acid or base spill, just use the bucket of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda to neutralize the chemical. Let the two finish reacting and then just clean it up with a cloth or broom. Any residue can be cleaned with water. How do I know when it stops reacting? Mm -hmm. 
When the fizzing stops, Johnny, after the fun, you can clean up. Johnny, what are you doing? You can't open that bottle of toxic gas. Fume hoods are designed to suck the air into a vent at the top so that no dangerous gases can escape. Any experiments that can cause fire, explosions, or pungent stench should be done in the fume hood. Isn't that better? Now that we've helped Johnny learn some important safety procedures, you too are ready to work in the lab. Just remember, safety first. <laughs>